So in the previous lecture, we have seen how to write from scratch, how to use great orthogonality theorem and use it to write from scratch the irreducible representation. All the irreducible representation that constitute the character table of a given point group, right? So we have taken example of C2V and C3V point groups and we worked out uh, using that and I expect that you do it as a home assignment to pick up few point groups and do it yourself all the calculations to see if you are able to write the character tables given any particular point group. Okay, so now in this lecture, what we will see is how do we go from reducible representation to irreducible representation. Okay, so reducible representation has its own importance and irreducible representation has its own importance. All the properties which lie along the unit vectors which form a basis for irreducible representation are defined by irreducible representations, right? And then we still have to use certain basis sets uh, to actually identify. We will see that later when we discuss the applications that we have to write down reducible representations and then we have to actually reduce it to IR representation. So let's see what is the basic idea. So the idea is let's say if we choose any basis set and matrix under any given symmetry operation R for any given point group for let's say this is the character table we are writing and then we have any given point group G and let's say this is tau 1. So under any given symmetric operation we have certain matrix right the order of the matrix will depend on the basis set chosen. So this can be a diagonalized matrix or non-diagonalized matrix. So this will have matrix elements such as A. So let's just call it A1, A2, A3, A4 and so on, right? So I'm not giving you the final dimension. So it can be any dimension, right? So now we have to diagonalize it to be able to reduce it, right? And how do we diagonalize it? Sometimes you will get diagonalized matrix by itself, but uh, many times you have to actually diagonalize it. How do you diagonalize it? Let's call this matrix as A. So to go from A to A prime, you have to find a matrix U that we have seen earlier that uh, you can do it, right? And you go to A prime where A prime is a diagonalized matrix. What do you mean by diagonalized matrix? That you will have matrix elements only along a let's say 5 a 11 something okay and and rest everything here and here will be zero right so these are called as diagonalized matrices which you can obtain by doing a similarity transformation on a but for that you have to the important point is how do you find a this is not a trivial thing how do you find u Right? How do you find U and U inverse, which is not trivial, which will give you a diagonalized matrix. So how do you do that? How do you find this out? The important point here is that trace of A is equal to trace of A prime, right? That we have seen. Similarity transformation does not change the trace of the matrix, right? And we also know that because this will be a this is a diagonalized matrix so all the individual matrix elements will actually come from the irreducible representations right so the trace of a prime as individual matrix elements right a1 plus a5 plus a11 which are nothing but trace of a1 matrix, it can be 1 cross 1 or 2 cross 2 and so on, but it is a irreducible representation or trace of A5 and so on, right? So this means that I can always say that the character or trace of a given irreducible representation under a symmetry operation is equal to, so this is nothing but trace of A prime. So this will be equal to linear combination of let's call it as j aj and this will be 
character jth representation under the symmetric representation uh, symmetry operation r right so now this is a linear combination it can be a1 a1 can so for example this number can appear twice here same number can appear twice so what i mean is that you have tau let's say a reducible tau can be tau 1 plus 2 tau 2 plus 3 tau 4 plus 1 tau 3 and so on right so these are individual ir representations so tau reducible is composed of several ir representations so tau reducible is a linear combination with some coefficients because we don't know how many times tau 1 will appear in tau reducible how many times tau 2 will appear in tau reducible so that is defined by this coefficient aj right and then this is the character of uh, jth irreducible representation under symmetry operation r so this is very clear so that any reducible representation can be broken down into a linear combination of irreducible representations now the problem is we don't know how to find a right aj so we don't know this we know how to write it from scratch how to write irreducible representation from scratch so this we know we know how to write a reducible representation given under any basis set we know this so we can find out the trace of any matrix under any reducible representation so this is also okay this is also okay but we don't know how to find aj so let us see if we can actually do this uh, maths okay and write down this again so chi r is equal to summation over j, all j aj chi jth representation under r Did I write? J, yeah. okay all right so now let's say if we multiply both sides by chi i r and sum over all r okay so if we do this what do we get on left hand side we get chi r chi i r summation over all r and what do we get on the right hand side summation j summation r a j chi j r chi i r right now let's see what do we have here so we have this term we have this term and we have this okay we can always take aj out of this summation r right so i can say summation over j aj summation over all r chi j r chi i r now this is a familiar figure uh, from third property of got which we have discussed already this amounts to this amounts to h delta ij right character under any given symmetry operation product of two different characters for two different ir representations under a given symmetry operation and summation over all symmetry operations would give you order of the group multiplied by delta ij right so this is there now we have summation over j summation over j means that all the values of j we have to take but the only value of j that will survive which is equal to i all other summations here will go to zero because we have delta ij term here right so this means that the only j value that is equal to i will survive right so now that, that summation is expanded so i don't have to write the summation so what we have to do is now j becomes i and what we are left with is h right because for i equal to j delta ij is equal to 1 for all other j values this goes to 0 right so we are left with ai h and here we have 
summation r chi r chi i r right now this problem is very simplified here we want it how do we get a and we have got it so 1 over h summation over all r character under reducible representation character under irreducible representation right so we know this we know this we know the order of the group so we can calculate ai right okay now let's take an example to see whether we can do it or not so let's take again c3 v point group example so now i am assuming that you are able to write all the irreducible representations by yourself using the rules of GOT, right? So you have E, 2 C3, 3 Sigma V. Again, because I am writing only the traces, so I am combining the class elements here because class elements will be same. So we have tau 1 as 1, 1, 1, tau 2 as 1, 1, minus 1. We have seen this earlier, and tau 3 is 2, minus 1, 0. There are three reducible representations because there are three classes, right? Now let's say I have chosen certain basis set where I get a reducible representation as well I don't know to start with whether it's a reducible or irreducible so you can always test it as we tested for water example whether this will be a reducible representation or a reducible representation again using rules of group theory, uh, GOT right so that also I'm assuming that you know how to distinguish between whether it's a reducible or irreducible representation. Okay. So now once you have written the character table and you have written the reducible representation under certain basis set, let's say some basis set. So now as per this rule, so we should have A1 tau1, A2 tau2. This is what we defined earlier, right? A3 tau3. Okay. So now our job is to determine what is A1, A2, and A3 so that we can break down this tau reducible into linear combination of the irreducible representations. Okay. So let's determine A1 first. So for A1, we have to write 1 over h. What is h here? h is 6, right? 6 elements. So h is 6. Now you have to take summation over all r, okay, and you have to multiply the trace under tau 1 to the corresponding value of this, right, to the corresponding value of tau, which is basically what I am saying is aj is equal to 1 over h, summation over all r, character under reducible representation, and character under irreducible representation, right. This is what we are going to use. Alright, so what I am going to do is I am going to pick up 5 and multiply it with 1. So pick up 5, multiply it with 1, then pick up 2, multiply it with 1, and then pick up minus 1, multiply it with 1, and then summation. Right? And I am also going to tell you one more point here that the class sizes also have to be multiplied here. So let's just see that class sizes have to be multiplied with this multiplication because the each class element has same trace. So instead of repeating that, we'll just multiply it with two. So we'll see that. Okay, so five, which comes from here, then you have one, which comes from here into class size, which is one over here, right? Okay, then two into one into class size so this is very important that you multiply it with class size plus minus 1 into 1 into 3 remember we have to take summation over all symmetry operations and if we do not multiply it with class size that means we are not taking summation over all symmetry operations because then we'll leave out c3 square or we'll leave out sigma v2 and sigma v3 so we have to include all of this. So that's why this multiplication with class size is important, right? Now, what do we get here? This is uh, five plus one 
प्लस फोर माइनस थ्री राइट डिवाइडेड बाय सिक्स सो व्हाट डू वी हैव हियर वन सो ए वन इज वन दैट मींस कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ टाउ वन इनटू दिस रिड्यूसिबल रिप्रेजेंटेशन इज वन टाइम्स राइट सो वी कैन ओके लेट्स गो हेड एंड डू फॉर ए टू सो लेट्स डू इट हियर सो फॉर ए टू अगेन दिस विल बी वन बाय सिक्स then i'll just uh, do this 5 plus 2 into 1 into 2 that is 4 minus 1 into minus 1 into 3 that is plus 3 right this gives me a2 as 2 right then a3 and now to test whether your calculation is correct or not these numbers have to be uh, natural numbers or whole numbers Zero can also come, right? Whole numbers. So because this cannot be in fraction, contribution of any given irreducible representation cannot be in fraction for a reducible representation. So again, so five into two ten minus four, and then zero. So what do we have here? One, so that way I can say that tau reducible is equal to tau one plus two tau two plus tau three, right? So this is a very very important result that now we are able to write any given reducible representation into linear combination of irreducible representations. We will see that how important this is when we'll. get down to applications okay so for home assignments today so let's take this example and try to reduce this another tau reducible will be which is 7 1 and minus 3 so try to work it out see if you can find out the linear combination of tau 1 tau 2 tau 3 here okay so that is all for this lecture so now that now we have learnt how to write down a reducible representation we already knew how to write down a reducible representation we already knew that how to write a irreducible representation from scratch without worrying about what the basis elements are or what the basis sets are and what the effect of symmetry operations are and so on entirely using got and now we have seen how to convert a reducible representation into irreducible representations linear combination of irreducible representations so that ends uh, the great orthogonality theorem discussion and uh, next class we will be discussing the character table how to like what are the different portions of character table what is it constituted by what are the important regions where are the basis sets identified and so on and so forth okay so that will be done in next class thank you